Hi everybody, Patrick here from PaintballProps.com, EngineeringShop.com, and ElectronicLessons.com. Links below. Uh, at PaintballProps.com, I'll be putting in a uh, general components section in the upcoming weeks, and uh, I just want to show off some components that I'll be placing in there. Now, these components aren't uh, prop exclusive, but I typically like to use them in my paintball props and or my escape room props. And so here we've got a lock solenoid controlled by 12 volts DC. We're going to power it up in just a minute with a diode. I'll show you how to do that. Uh, the diode's used to protect your drive circuitry from spikes caused by the electromagnet, the coil inside the uh, solenoid. We've got a uh, high power 20 amp up 12 volts um, on off switch with LED and this one's a, this one's really cool. This is something you'd see in movies for uh, you know uh, sending off a missile or detonating something. And if they come in uh, blue and red. And lastly, a key module. This is just an on-off switch. It's an on-off switch. It comes with two keys, uh, a, mounting, uh, a mounting nut, and it's just a matter of soldering uh, both pins. It's just an on-off switch. We'll get, we'll get to an example in just a second. But first of all, let's have a look at these uh, power switches. These power switches have three tabs. Um, the cathode to the LED, um, and your power in, your switch power in, switch power out. So you put, say, 12 volts here, and on this side you connect your circuit, and you connect DC ground here to uh, to power the LED when the uh, switch is in the on position. So let me just do that right now. When the switch is in on position, I've got 12 volts here. I'm going to move this off for a second. Uh, we've got 12 volts here. And I would imagine connecting my load here, my the, my load circuit. When you turn on power, 12 volts travels through the switch and powers your your load. Now I'm going to turn it off. Uh, but as well, what you can do is you can solder a DC ground connection right here. And as soon as you flick power on, not only is power uh, flowing through the switch through the high power contact here. Uh, the LED, which also has internal current limiting, uh, is turned on when there's a DC, uh, DC ground connection right here. And of course, when you flick it shut, the LED turns off. Now, again, there is you don't need your own you don't need an external um, resistor. Now, I'm going to I've got 12 volts here. I'm going to bring this down to five volts. So now I've got five volts of the input. And does the LED still work? Sure does. So you you only need let's try three volts. You don't need to be using the LED when you're using these switches, but it's a neat option. LED still works at three volts. So whatever power you want between these two lines, it's just a high power on-off switch. If you want to add the LED, add a DC ground connection to this tab, and you can turn on your LED. When you open it up, you'll notice there's a nut on top and a nut on the bottom. This piece right here, it's not electronically connected to anything. You can remove it, drill a hole into your project box, bring the switch up from underneath, and then fasten this part back on using this removable nut. They're high quality, and they're a lot of fun to use. Now, you don't need to purchase these from me. You can obviously find these uh, all over the place, but they will be at paintballprops.com, so check them out. The solenoids I have don't come with mounting brackets, but the idea is you make your own and you can place this in a cabinet uh, or in a door. And by default, the plunger is out. When you apply power, the plunger is pulled in, essentially unlocking. Now what you'll notice right here is there's a red and blue wire. Polarity doesn't matter. You can apply 12 volts in ground to either side uh, and what will happen is uh, power will flow through the coil and back through to DC ground. You can use a high power transistor or a relay to drive this. So for the sake of uh, for the sake of just being consistent with other videos, I'll use red for power and I'll use blue for say ground. Now I'm not going to connect this to a circuit, but I'm going to show you how to drive it just using a basic power supply circuit. Now what I've got here is a just a general two pin header. And I'm going to feed it through the hole. So now I can actually connect power to it. But I'm also going to need, need a diode. Now when you, uh, when you charge a coil 
and you and you uh, remove power when the electro uh, when the electromagnetic field collapses, it causes a voltage spike on the power line or on the line driving it, and that's why you need a diode shunt. Now, what you might see, what you might notice, is on the diode there's a white side, a side with a little white stripe. That is your negative. That is your cathode, and the black side is your positive, your um, your anode. So, how we're gonna let me connect this, and we'll power it up. Here's the diagram. Here's your solenoid, red wire, black wire. This is your uh, diode. This is the white side. This is the black side. Black side is anode, positive. Uh, white side is cathode, negative. We're actually connecting the, the negative side to 12 volts. If we reverse this, if we place the uh, negative of the diode, the, the cathode to ground, and the, um, the anode to 12 volts, 12 volts is going to flow right through the diode to ground and blow up your diode. So. This is the diode shunt. We're going to connect 12 volts right here. As you can see, the white stripe is right there. And we're going to connect ground right there. And what's going to happen is it's going to, it's going to pull the plunger in, and it's going to draw about 750 milliamps at 12 volts. So the diode just protects. That's all it does. And there you go. So obviously you put this into a circuit board, you could use a relay to drive it, you could use a transistor to drive it, but it's reliable and it works every time. The key module is very simple, it comes with two keys, only fits in one way, uh, on, off, there's two soldering pads and a mounting nut. When you're soldering to these pads, make sure you use uh, reliable wire, thick gauge, preferably if you're, if you're powering uh, a larger circuit or a more high powered circuit make sure that you add enough solder to each of the pads before you connect the wires and as well don't apply too much heat for too for too long because while these units are reliable there is a plastic backing here which can get burned so something to consider now let's look at some dimensions you're going to want to drill a hole with a uh, of roughly 10 millimeters so the diameter of your hole should be about 10 millimeters and the, the, there's a stopper here at the top, as you can see, so there, and there is some room for air because the diameter of the stopper is about 14 millimeters. So you have about a 4 millimeter uh, difference in, uh, in the, between the uh, stopper and the diameter of the hole. So if you have a, the proper drill bit, it should pop right down into place, and then, of course, you come up underneath, and you fix it in place with a set of pliers and that mounting nut then you solder your wires into place. Hunky-dory. So that's it. Thanks again for watching, everyone. Check us out at paintballprops.com, electroniclessons.com, and engineeringshock.com. We'll have these uh, posted up at paintballprops.com soon under our new component section.